have congestive heart failure, if you don't go to the hospital, you'll be dead by the weekend. You will die. Well, then I better get to work because I have a lot of essays this week. God. As a healthcare practitioner myself, but also someone who hasn't struggled with obesity, I wondered what factors led Charlie to avoid seeking medical attention. The 2022 movie, The Whale, based on the play of the same name, is not a fantastical movie. So it allows us to reflect on a hypothetical lived experience involving obesity. As with other forms of bias, weight bias is a tendency to distinguish between the normal and the abnormal, judging a person first and foremost by their weight. Slim becomes associated with good, fat with bad. The line between us seeing different body sizes and then taking that a step further and attributing moral values to those body sizes is fuzzy. From childhood, our social conditioning creates mental shortcuts for us to make quick judgments, but these often fail to acknowledge the complexity of a situation. While we presently associate larger bodies with unhealthiness, this has not always been the case. When larger bodies become abnormal, then so too do attitudes toward them become increasingly more discriminatory. Now, we don't see how this process plays out in Charlie's life. Instead, we're dropped in on a Monday and our modern day visualizations of weight discrimination serve as a backdrop for the story. So when we see Charlie suffering from chest pain, we share Liz's frustration wondering why he won't just go to the doctor. Clearly, Charlie isn't ignorant. He knows he's sick and that medical interventions could help. As the movie progresses, we learn one reason why he's giving up on his health, but subtextually, there's also evidence that his reluctance to seek care is influenced by how he believes to be seen by the medical community. And so these external biases against Charlie's body size become internalized into his own perception of himself. Who would want me to be a part of their life? The implicit association test developed by Harvard seeks to spread awareness about implicit bias towards various social groups, including those of race, gender, sexual orientation, age, disability, and relevant to this video, weight. According to the American Psychological Association, implicit bias is a negative attitude of which one is not consciously aware against a specific social group. A 2023 New Yorker article reports that while other implicit biases measured by the IAT waned from 2007 to 2016, weight bias grew. From this weight bias comes the moralization of weight. Different body sizes are associated with different positive and negative values. Combine this with the misleading widespread belief that obesity is, in all cases, strongly predicted by individual will, and you get the belief that most people struggling with obesity are largely to blame for their illness. Now, I can already hear someone saying, well, yeah, that's true. If they didn't eat the food, then they wouldn't gain the weight. So the solution I'm hearing here to reduce obesity, which to be fair would work, is to force people to stop putting food in their mouths. Which reminds me of the argument that to significantly reduce car accidents, we should put a spike on the end of the steering wheel aimed at people's chest and then people wouldn't drive as fast. Both these solutions focus on individual responsibility and fail to address larger social determinants of health. But where are we in society when we're all about body positivity and if you weigh 600 pounds, you're supposed to be a hero for mm. flying in a coach seat and taking up three seats and making other people uncomfortable. But at the same time, we're obsessed with easy weight loss. I, we, we have no idea who we are or what is important to us. Anyways, so these beliefs moralizing weight are often influenced by media. A 2018 study in current obesity reports on media and its influence on obesity gave 2,000 participants news articles about body size. Some were given articles indicating fatness to be unhealthy, under personal control, and thus okay to stigmatize, while others were given the opposite. Unsurprisingly, there was a greater association between negatively framed articles and greater weight bias, willingness to include larger body sizes as abnormal, and willingness to discriminate against people perceived as fatter, including 
charging them more for healthcare. What's even more alarming, however, is how these beliefs take root within the medical community. Despite an increasingly complex understanding of the metabolic and pathophysiologic pathways of obesity, there is still a significant portion of the medical community that attributes obesity to laziness. This in itself contributes to misdiagnosis, under treatment of medical conditions, and internalized shame. So it's not too far-fetched to see why someone in Charlie's situation would have another reason to avoid the medical community. The New Yorker article mentioned above references a case where a 46-year-old female going in to see an obesity specialist and suffering from shortness of breath is told by the specialist to go on a diet. Later, it's found out that the woman had life-threatening blood clots, a symptom of which is dyspnea or shortness of breath. Other studies on medical quality for persons with obesity indicate physicians spend less time with them and are more reluctant to perform preventative screenings. Surveys of people with obesity commenting on their doctor's view of them indicate they feel disrespected and that their weight is blamed for all their medical problems. Understandably, these people are less likely to report medical concerns to their doctor, which just feeds into the vicious loop of under treatment and worse health outcomes. Because obesity is a chronic progressive condition, it's unfortunately likely that Charlie has had similar experiences. And there is a consistent correlation between this internalized experience of weight bias and negative mental health outcomes. When we meet Charlie at this point in his story, he's largely given up on himself and his will to live and is instead focused on ensuring a happy, fulfilled future I for his daughter. I should write for you, but I could work with you on How this. much can you pay me? Everything I have. All the money I have in the bank. How much? 120000 something like that. I'd have to check. So we've really only scratched the surface here with what this film has to say about the modern societal stigma surrounding obesity. But we now have at least a better understanding of why Charlie may be making the decisions about his medical care that he does. In the next part, we'll take a look at another factor motivating Charlie to make- Charlie, you have to go to the hospital. This has gone way too far. You rack up tens of thousands of dollars in hospital bills. I'll never be able to pay back, ever. Beyond this, there are many more questions to examine that this movie partly responds to. However, the most illuminating one and the one that sits at the heart of the whale is what can be done to address the stigmatization of weight within the larger societal framework. Part two on body positivity and health outcomes will be out in a couple weeks. Until then, I'd love to hear your respectful comments on what I've presented so far.